We have data showing that as, as more immunoglobulins and nutrients and bioactives compounds that are present in colostrum, the more the calves consume and absorb, the better is the health and, and performance of the calf. I'm Bill Weiss, host of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. My guest today is Dr. Carla Batar. Uh, Carla is an associate professor in animal science in the College of Agriculture at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. She's been conducting research and nu- on nutrition and management of dairy calves for the last 25 years. Carla, welcome to the Black Belt. Well, thank you, Dr. Weiss, for having me. What we're going to talk about today is some research you published a few years ago in the journal, in the journal Animals on thermoregul- thermoregulatory responses when calves are fed different amounts of colostrum. I guess I always like to start off as, why did you do this research? Yeah, we, we have seen a lot of problems with calves that are born during the winter and uh, somehow are not housed well and are um, in, in places where there is a lot of wind and they might be wet or something like this. So there is a cold challenge. And we wanted to know if, if we feed more colostrum, if these calves would be more protected uh, regarding to, to cold. What uh, treat in, in broad strokes, what treatments did you use and can you explain the, the cold stress model a little bit? We have conducted this uh, trial several years ago and we were only able to publish on 21. But back then we, we, we were thinking about feeding more colostrum and maybe doing two feedings and that's what is the uh, more actual recommendation today. So we fed 10% that it was the recommendation back then to feed 10% of the body weight uh, within six hours. We fed within two hours, uh, but in two, uh, two feedings. So 5% and then five more percent uh, within two hours. And the other treatment, 15% and 20%. So the, the actual recommendation is 15% being 10% at within two hours and 5% six hours later. So back then we were already um, trying to increase absorption of IgG, but also looking at absorption of nutrients and mainly in this case, we were looking at energy for the calf to control uh, core temperature. So what we have done, we fed these calves with uh, this different amount of colostrum. And then we, when, when they accomplish 24 hours of age, we put them in a walking cooler set to 10 degrees Celsius. And we have done a lot of evaluations such as heart rate, uh, respiratory rate, shivering score. And we took some blood samples to understand all the changes in the metabolic profile of the calves. Okay, if uh, you, you took a lot of measurements, let's kind of start with production. What, what did you find growth rates and so on? Yeah, during, during the, the cold challenge, we could see um, decreasing shivering score uh, suggesting that the calves were more uh, able to control temperature uh, with no shivering uh, strategies like producing energy from the fat, for instance. And that was uh, confirmed by the lower lactate concentration in the blood of these calves. When we follow the calves during the pre weaning we didn't see much of a difference. There was were no differences on on performance. Nothing like worth to note it. 
uh, only the heart girt was higher for calves that were fed 15 or 20 percent of colostrum but nothing more than this and and there were no um, sanitary problems or more incidence of diseases so that that was it we we were able to to show the change in metabolism in the first 24 hours after the cold challenge but not during there was there were no effect during the preening period and and just for the the listeners the only difference was the colostrum everything after that all calves were fed the same everything was the same yeah the calves were fed the same and what can you give us a brief outline of what calves were fed after the colostrum or during the the liquid phase they were fed a colostrum replacer six liters a day that is the most common feeding uh, plan in brazil so two um two feedings of three liters and and were fed um starter concentrate from the first day and they had free water so that was it for this trial we didn't look at the at feeding forage just concentrate. Yeah, you, you also took some immune measurements. What, what did you see on those? Well, just for the first, uh, for the beginning, we look at the, well, we only look at total protein and globulin, and the, there was higher concentration for calves that were fed the 20%. So maybe we we have uh, opportunity to increase uh, from 15% that is fed today is recommended today to 20% to like prevent things like that. Do, do you think this would be unique to cold stress or maybe if, if even under thermal neutral, the 20% might improve immune function as well? Yeah, for sure. We have, we have data showing that as as more immunoglobulins and nutrients and bioactives compounds that are present in colostrum, the more the calves consume and absorb, the better is the health and, and performance of the calf. It doesn't have to be this hard to keep cows pregnant. At Virtus Nutrition, we understand the negative impact that lost pregnancies have on a dairy's economics. Every failed pregnancy means more money spent on expensive semen, additional replacements to raise, and fewer valuable beef calves to sell. Feed what embryos need. Strata with EPA DHA, the pregnancy nutrient. Well, to, to finish up, what what areas are what else are you working on in this area uh, today? We have been looking at transition milk. It's a hot topic for those who are working with dairy calves, but we have not accomplished very good results with that different from others from the literature. So we are still trying to understand and there is this voicing telling me that the problem is the, the bacteria load that may be present in the transition milk. So maybe in the future, we are going to look at that. Well, great. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us. This has been interesting. Thank you.